How y'all doing? Oh, great. So we had a poll earlier in here about who's an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. And can y'all put your hands up if you're an entrepreneur? Okay, if you're not an entrepreneur, who just wants to go to the next level yeah. in some form or fashion in their life? Put your hand up. All right, so what Dave told you about me, um, my name is G. Bryant. If you don't know me, um, it's fine. You will know me. <laughs> Especially after this, uh, you know, after this is over, you will know me. I'm 28 years old. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. I'm not going to say too much because I don't want y'all to cry. It might be heartfelt and everything. I just want to keep it kind of cordial today, so I don't want any tears. I don't have no tissue for anybody. So um, I'm 28 years old. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's where I grew up. I uh, wasn't dealt the best hand in life. I relocated to Atlanta, and that's when I started uh, what you can call my empire. Uh, I've lived in my car. I've woken up on the floor. I've woken up on an air mattress because it had a hole in it every time I went to sleep. I've gone crazy. I've been depressed. Uh, I thought about all types of things. I've sold any and everything you can imagine, um, good and bad. Um, so I've been through a lot of things. Um, but I will tell you that through all that, it built me today. And I'm going to give you guys some practical steps as well as some encouragement and motivation on what you can do to take yourself to the next level. So first thing, everybody made a New Year's resolution, right? Did we all make a New Year's resolution? Yeah. No. no. What you make? What you call it? What you call it? My word is happiness. Happiness. At the end of the year, I have to be happy. Right. All right, so I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about commitment. Yeah. I tell people make New Year's commitment. If you're going to make a commitment, it don't even have to be a New Year. Make a commitment. You know why? Because a commitment, you're, you're invested in the commitment. I make commitments. I don't make resolutions. I don't have benchmarks. I make commitments because once I'm committed, nothing can take me away from my commitment. It's like marriage, right? When you make a, yes. it's a commitment, right? Now, we renege on our commitments in marriage in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> But still, the, the, the idea is there that you're supposed to be committed. Now, people, everyone wants to progress in life, but progress does not come without commitment. See, the problem with a lot of people is we try to progress with no commitment. So things get hard and we move here. Some gets hard, we move here. Some gets hard, we move here. There's no commitment. You might have made a resolution and say, hey, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do this. But when it gets hard, there's no commitment. I'm bound to my businesses. I am bound to my commitment. I'm bound to every single thing that I do because I make commitments every single time and I don't fold and I don't go away from them. So one of my companies, I did tell Dave, I was just feeling, you know, feeling like I needed to motivate him one day because I feel like he has one of the best brands in Atlanta and I feel like he needs to take his brand to the next level. So I called him out on it. I said, Dave, <laughs> I said, I said, uh, I said, Dave, uh, yeah, you know, I don't like to disclose income like that, but I said, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make $100,000 this week. Um, and, you know, by the end of this week, it's going to happen. So I sent him a screenshot that I made 90K, and I sent him a screenshot the next day saying, you know, I made over $100,000 this week. Uh, and that came from my fitness company right here called RI28. I'm going to tell you a little story how I created this company. Uh, this is an online fitness company. If you don't know about it, you'll know about it soon. I'm moving more into the western part. And what happened was... At one of my lowest times, online, I saw people selling fitness programs. And I was like, I could sell fitness programs. And I was like, because there was a human being selling a fitness program. And I saw that people were purchasing a fitness program and getting in shape. So four and a half years ago, I started typing my first fitness program on Microsoft Word. And I sold it. I was like, oh, I sold a program. And it sucked. <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a terrible program. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to keep retooling and retweaking this thing and see if I can get something better. So I'm retooling, retweaking, retooling, retweaking. Re this is for years. I was actually selling fitness programs to get groceries. Wow. All right. Um, I don't have the best track record. I can't get the best jobs. Don't, didn't, didn't get a big degree or anything like that. So I had to do what I had to do to make what I had to hey, make, make what I had to make. So three years later, uh, I had invested enough money to get my own website. It was gbryant.com. That was my first website. The day I opened the website, it crashed because so many people signed up. After three years of writing programs, it crashed, it crashed. It was just like, yo, we can't have no more people. It's too many people want your programs, you know? So I was like, you know what, I got something. I got something. So I was sitting on the couch one day and I was like, you know what? For this program 
to go where I wanted to go, it has to go beyond me. And I started thinking P90X. People like that stuff, that little quick stuff, like the little quick shit. They like P90X and MP45. They like to do quick, cool shit. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm gonna make some quick, cool shit. I was like, RI28, because my program was results in 28 days. So I was like, RI28. I called my lawyer, I was like, is that available trademark? She was like, yeah. I was like, get it. So next thing you know, RI28 comes about. Seven months later, my company did $1.5 million. Wow. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double this year. I already know. I just got an app and everything like that. And that's just one of my companies. I also own two gyms in Atlanta. I just opened my second gym uh, last month. And I own a trucking company as well. Nice. Just because I thought that was a good business to get into. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, mind you, so I'm going to tell, tell you about why um, I got started. And then I'm going to give you guys some practical steps. First, from going from where you are right now to where you want to go. All right, so these are just practical steps. No motivation here. So if you are a part-time entrepreneur right now, trying to figure out how do I go to full-time, now, I'm going to tell you guys my way. I'm not saying my way set in stone. I'm going to give you my steps. I tell everybody, from an income standpoint, figure out how much money you need to make to pay your bills. That's first things first. Figure how much money you need to make just to pay your bills. Not to live extravagantly, not to go on trips. And I'm going to tell you why. You're going to take a dip when you go full time. Yeah. And your lifestyle, your sanity, your hygiene, your clothing, <laughs> Your comfortability, if you're not willing to do that, it is not for you. I promise you it's not for you. It's not. That lifestyle that you're used to from the 9 to 5 check, it has to go away. I've went through periods of time where I didn't buy clothes for like a year. I read books the whole year. And I listened to YouTube. That shit was free. You know what I'm saying? And the funny thing about what we do in society is all the things that are detrimental to us cost money. The things and the secrets of success, I literally have a PhD in everything I, I, I'm involved with from YouTube and, and books. You can literally give yourself a PhD in your industry. Yeah. I'm better in my industry than every single person that comes against me because I have more knowledge and I don't stop learning because it's free. The hookah was $40. <laughs> the book was $4. The book made me $400,000. The hookah gave me bad lungs. The bottle in the club was 300. The online marketing class was 300. I made a million dollars. The bottle got me drunk. You see what I'm saying? So we got to take start taking advantage of those things that are, you know, they're free. Those those cheap learning, you got to learn. You have to learn over and over and over again. Now, there's a universal principle one of my favorite universal principles. It says you reap what you sow. Now, principles aren't man-made. And they've stood the test of time over and over again. So you got to reap. And there's so many different ways you can, um, you got to sow, sorry. There's so many different ways you can sow. I'm going to tell you two of the most important ways you got to sow. You got to sow in action, and you have to sow when you're not in action. And what I mean by that is you have to sow in action. So you have to do all the necessary things to get yourself where you need to go. You got to be here. You got to be there. You got to be here. You got to talk to this person, close this deal, run back and forth. Because there's three stages of business that I, that I, that I go by. You have, your, you have your self-employment stage, you have your business stage, and you have your investing stage. All right, your self-employment stage, you're running left and right in your business. Running left and right, you're doing this, talking to this person, you're just running like a chicken with your head cut off, just wondering, you're crying, you're emotional, you're depressed the next day, you don't know, somebody didn't sign up, they said they was going to sign up, like, you're like, damn, they ain't sign up, you thought the check was coming, they didn't come, the mailman, he ain't doing what he supposed to do, you know what I'm saying, all types of shit going on in your life, the kids is crying, and then you got to keep your credit right, you know what I'm saying, and then, you know, get out of control, that's self-employment, you got to go crazy, and once you sow into your self-employment stage, you just feel something like, you know, it's time to, it's time to do business. Now, let's say, let's, say, let's say you have a customer. You might have something because you were self-employed and you got yourself a customer. Now, it could have been luck. Let's say you get a repeat customer. You might got a business. You get a referral. You might got a business. Right? So now in this business stage, now you have to figure out what am I going to do business-wise to take myself to the next level. This is when you're getting contacts. You're building a relationship. You might need to get a partner. You might can't do it all yourself. You might need some capital. Quick story about me, I never got a loan, I never had an investor. I didn't have credit, and I didn't know nothing about it, and I didn't care about it. I did something called finessing. That's a whole other story. (laughs) 
<laughs> but listen, when you get to that business stage, that business stage is very important because this is going to make or break you. Entrepreneurship is like a 2% thing. That means about 2% of people in here are going to make it. So look around, who's going to be? Like 2% of y'all going to go through depression, be ready to go crazy, and you're going to come up on top. I don't know who's going to be. Like on some real, if you're, not really, if you're not really willing to go through all that, you might as well just leave. I like keep it real. The shit really ain't for everybody. Even at where I'm at right now, the shit still ain't for everybody. I be like, damn. Like sometimes you look at the top, you ever look at the top and there ain't nobody there? And, and everything goes wrong, you look at the bottom, everybody looking at you? Can you handle that? I'm dead up. You got to be able to handle that. Handle that. See, so your business stage, that's where you start to make your contacts. You figure out what you need to do. You start to improve your business. You might put a little money in there and say, okay, let me see if that works. Put a little marketing dollars. You might start marketing. You know, you hire. I don't know what your business is, but you start hiring. You start doing things like that. Then you got your investing stage, all right? Invest stage is very important. This is when you start using your money, use your business to make more money. I'm in the investing stage in a lot of my businesses. I look at it, I'm like, oh, I need to put some money right there. Let me see if that's work. That work? That ain't work? All right. Let me put some money right there. See if that work. But I didn't get there without going through the self-employment stage. And, 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 that, and that's the part of the process that a lot of people have to get through, is the self-employment stage. That, 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 that part where you just don't know if it's going to work. And this is what usually happens to people is there's no guarantee. And that usually stops people when they're all they're doing their personal development, you're, you're feeling good, you listen to Jim Rome, it's like, yeah, I'm about to go attack the day. Eric Thomas got me pumped, and then there's no, there's no guarantee. And you're doing something, you're still not getting, you're, you're not getting anything. But I'd rather have a possibility for a million than a guarantee for a hundred. Yeah. And that's what, that's what drives me every day is to have that guarantee that, listen, yo, I mean, have that possibility, like, listen, yo, I can go out here and get it. I can literally make it happen if I want to. Every single thing that I created, I literally thought about it. And then I was like, yo, this can happen. And the reason why I'm glad Dave disclosed income, I see a lot of, a lot of us in the building, um, we're probably looking like, yo, is it really possible to become a millionaire without doing something crooked? That's what I used to think. I used to like, yo, somebody, they, they doing something different. They had like a little something on the side. They probably had some drug money. They reinvested it and flipped it or something like that. That's what I used to think. I was like, I can't go out in this real world. I mean, they not, it, it's not possible. So I disclosed income and everything's documented to let you know, guys, it is possible. It's a paradigm shift. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I laying in the bed like, yo. Like I had to look, I had to look the other day. I was like, yo, 28 years old, and it's possible. And what kills me um, is that this is not even this is not this is not something that's taught. Or it's not something that's given. It's the knowledge that's not given. And think about it, as you get older and older or as you get more and more into your business, you start to realize that the principles that get you where you need to go or the principles that got you this far, wherever you guys are in your business, the principles that's gotten you this far are the same principles that are going to take you to the next level. Yeah. But the, the thing about it is, what happens is we, all, we usually, I would say a lot of us are spiritual or because if you're an entrepreneur, you've got to have some type of faith. Yeah. What happens is once we get to a barrier, or a block, we start to become physical, and the spiritual comes out. We start touching things. It's like, this, this ain't working. This ain't working. You don't use your principles, because this is the thing. When you want the big cash out, we're going to talk money. When you want the big cash out, the big reward, it is never going to happen on your time. Right. It's not. It will happen. At the, I tell people all the time, they say, yo, what are you doing next? I say, I'm being led right now. It ain't even on my time no more. It's not. I, I ain't got no control. What I do is I serve, and I focus on being a good person and giving out a good product and making sure people get what they need to get, I'll get mine on the back end. My business exploded in 2017. I just got a write-up in Huffington Post. Nice. Nice. You see what I'm saying? I used to like ride or be in a grocery store. I'm like, those are important people in that, whatever that is, Huffington Post. There's important people in there. Next thing I'm on Huffington Post. And I think to myself, you know, it was a shift. Now, here's another practical step for you guys. Write this down. Alignment. Yes. Alignment. I'm going to piss some people off right now. You got a goal. You got a goal. And there's something that's not in alignment with your goal that you're still entertaining. 
and you need to cut it off unapologetically with no remorse. Like literally. So I'm going to tell you, this time, this ain't no practice life. This shit going to keep going and going and going and will leave your ass behind if you don't cut it off. And I mean, any, listen, I got friends, I got family, and then I got me. I had to figure out, was that more important than me or me becoming the best version of myself? So I tell people all the time, write down what your goal is. Then write, thing, write down everything else you're involved with. Anything that's not in alignment with your goal, literally put a red X through it and cut it off. Stop doing it. Stop conversing with them. Stop saying yes. Like literally, one of the best things I've ever did was stop saying yes. When somebody calls me, what you doing? I ask you, what, what you doing? I'm not even going to tell you what I'm doing. The answer is probably no, too. I say no before I say yes, and I might double back and say yes. Yo, G, yo, can you help me? I got a broken leg. Nah. Oh, you got a broken leg? All right, let me, let me help you out. You know what I'm saying? I, I got I to gotta, I gotta double back and figure out what you're talking about first because, listen, I got to make sure you, when it's an alignment. Hey, if it ain't an alignment where I'm trying to go, I can't, I can't get involved. And I'm going to tell you something about this world. It's very crazy. It's energy, energy, energy. I'm big on energy. Your vision, whatever your vision is for your life, it could transform a million realities. I'm going to tell you how this works. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't fulfill your purpose, you're selfish. You're selfish. One more time. You're selfish. If you don't fulfill your purpose here, whatever you got on your mind that's supposed to change the world or give back to others, you are being selfish. I'm going to tell you why. There was a woman, right? She was going blind. Um, she was overweight, going blind, shooting herself with insulin every single day. She found my program. Today, she doesn't take insulin anymore. She's down like 70 something pounds. I probably saved her life. She didn't have money to go to the gym. My program's $39. She didn't have money to get a trainer. She didn't have money to go to the gym. She was lost, depressed, and she found my program. She just got writ written up in the, um, I, I actually hired her too. Wow. So she does all my clothing, like my shirts and stuff. She ships them out, gave her a part-time job as well. Nice. Right? <laughs> um, what I'm saying is though, my vision that I had when I was sitting at the broken laptop because I ain't had no money to get a new one, of helping change thousands of people's lives through fitness, transform her reality. Now listen, I have thousands and thousands of documented people who have success stories in my program. And each person has inspired someone else to have a success story. And that person has inspired somebody else to have a success story. I probably, my, in my career, I'm in the millions already. My little vision then gave back to a million people's reality. Whatever purpose you have, can give back to a million people's realities. And that's the duty that you have on this earth, is to give. It may not even be from an income perspective, but the income gonna come with the work. You put the work in, you put the work in, you put the work in, and if you wanna be whoever you wanna be, you put the work in, and watch the floodgates start opening. I got a, uh, what's his name? Bob Proctor, I like that guy. He said, uh, he said, overflow and abundance comes after a lot of hard work. Very simple. Overflow and abundance comes after a lot of hard work. That's exactly how it works. My overflow and abundance came after a lot of hard work. But the last thing I'm going to tell you guys, and I'm going to leave you with this. If you are in a position where you feel like maybe this ain't for me, or if you feel like maybe my time's running out, or if you feel like I've been giving it my all and it's not going anywhere, just understand this. No matter what your age is, no matter how old you are, you don't gotta look at me, I'm 28, there's people in here that's 40, there's 50 and 60 year old millionaires that's about to be born, there's 28 year old millionaires, there's 30, 40, it's never too late to be who you're supposed to be. It's never too late. But if you're going to have the work ethic, all right, if you're, if, you're, if you're willing to reap, I mean, if you're willing to sow, if you're willing to have a driving force, 
If you're willing to do everything you need to do in your position and your power to be who you need to be to get to your power place. We all got a power place. And somebody told me, this, I'm leaving leave out with this. Somebody told me one day, five years ago, he's like, gee, you got the power. I said, how I got the power? He said, you, you can do all everything you want to do. You just don't know it yet. And then he told me, listen, somebody has to see the power in you before you see it in yourself. And sometimes when somebody sees the power in you before you see it in yourself, it's going to make all the difference. So I see the power in everybody. I'm like, yo, you're great. Yo, you don't even know it. Like you're radiant and you're vibrant. Understand that sometimes when you're not where you're supposed to be, you don't walk boldly yet. But I'm going to get a little biblical on you before I leave. God says we're always supposed to walk in total dominion. That's how our spirits were supposed to rule. But sometimes when we're not where we're at, we still get timid and we small. I was speaking like this four years ago when I had five dollars in my bank account. I didn't care. If you was going to listen, you were going to listen because I was bold and I was big. And I'm bold and I'm big today. Ten years from now, if I'm broke or if I got ten million dollars, I'm going to speak the same way. So go out of here, run your businesses, talk boldly and vibrant out yourself because your tongue is the biggest thing you have going. You watch with your words. Your words come right back to you. Yeah. All right. So listen, this is G. Bryant. Listen, if y'all got any questions or anything, we're going to have a little panel after this. And I hope y'all enjoyed your night. I hope y'all enjoyed my speaking. Y'all have a great night.